As you can see, the service driver assist system error message is displayed when I arrived at the vehicle. Alright, so there's not really anything special about programming the module per se, uh, but as you can see here, you're just going to select the long range radar sensor from the SPS system and go ahead and perform the programming event. That'll go through without any kind of special uh, anything needed to perform the actual programming. It's the calibration that requires a little work. So, after we programmed it, let's get on to the calibration. All right, the long range radar sensor module learn function is under special functions in the long range radar sensor module itself. Uh, when you collect the learn using the launch X431V product I'm using here, uh, it gives you a message about how to do it. You're gonna need to drive it between 10 and 30 minutes. It'll give a calibration complete message. The service driver assist message will go out of the dash, uh, but mainly you need to drive it somewhere between I believe over 35 miles an hour is listed, uh, yeah, 56 kilometers an hour, so over 35 miles an hour uh, using normal driving conditions, following cars. So we're going to go ahead and click the learn there, and it's going to put us into this mode. Uh, now at this point, we're going to drive the vehicle. Down at the bottom, we have to click the learn button, and I'm going to drive the vehicle until uh, the message goes from in progress to learned. Um, now, this could take an extended period of time depending upon driving conditions. In this particular time that I did it, at least the first time I attempted to program this, I got the error message. And as you can see there, if we go ahead and pull up the codes, we get a mounting incorrect error. Uh, at which point we pulled the bumper on the vehicle, and I apologize I didn't get a picture of this, but the bracket at which the module itself was mounted to was in fact bent. This is the thing that we hear about all the time. Uh, I had originally questioned the body shop very specifically. I asked them, was the bracket or anything that it mounted to damaged? He said no. In the collision, it actually just broke the connector off of the module, and that was the reason for the replacement of the module. Uh, but the way that this module actually hangs, and I'll see if I can get a picture here for you just of a diagram since I didn't take a photo. Uh, the way that this module is mounted onto the bracket, it didn't take much pressure on the module itself in order to get it to bend and not be parallel to the ground anymore. So we got a replacement module. Luckily, uh, GM had one on hand. We got the bumper off. They drove straight over to the dealer and picked it up, came back while I was finishing up another couple vehicles on their lot. Uh, and then we went for a second calibration attempt. Now, this one did went very, very quickly. Uh, about... I don't know, probably four to eight minutes of driving, and we get the message that says, learned and success. The service driver assist system message went out on the dash, and then the um, codes were all clear. There was no other issue. So from that point, I went ahead and engaged the cruise control and ran through a couple other functions, and the vehicle behaved as I would expect it to, uh, especially for the rainy conditions. So that was my uh, success story on that one. But... Just like any other ATIS event, there are many things to look at. There are lots of liabilities there, uh, and that's for a whole discussion on its own. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video.